Hello my soccer universe. Well, I want to run through the matches that I watched over the weekend and yeah, wearing the shirt of the matches I saw the big winner, I have to say, uh, which is of course Juventus. This is a Juve shirt where they were not as overbearingly dominant and I actually find this a beauty back then. I really liked Juve. I don't dislike Juve, it's just that they're winning way too much. And also still, I shot yesterday the Serie A uh, jersey review, so just imagine you were over there and you see the background there so i have to readjust that for tonight's video uh before we switch all up and we go into national teams which is also kind of exciting i would say but yeah my watching was mostly serie a uh, this weekend and because they were two really big games that kind of grabbed my attention i wonder why they already put those in round two uh, which is Juve Napoli, and then yesterday was the uh, Derby della Capitale between Roma and Lazio. So, two huge games, and both uh, a lot of happening in there. But I actually started out my watching weekend by watching Lask against Wolfsburg, which is second versus third in Austria. But after the game in Brugge, Lask was just way too tired. They held to a nil nil and could have made a goal. For most of the uh, for most of the time, but in the 80th minute, it was just uh, missing coordination that they gave up a goal, and then it could have gotten even two or three uh, or counter attacks where Wolfsburg missed. So those are the two Europa League starters. The big disappointment of the weekend is that although they're still available, I probably cannot buy Europa League tickets because I don't have a babysitter and I want to go with my wife. I don't. I mean, I could go alone, but I don't want to do that either. So. So be it, I watch it on TV. <laughs> it's probably anyway better, uh, given what well, the hassle is to come home. So that was the first game, and it actually overlapped into uh, the Milan game, um, where, yeah, I have to say, Milan against Brescia, uh, they had a 1 0 lead at halftime. I think the Charles John Ogle had it in. I just saw the goal from the first half. Second half, I was kind of so and so. Uh, I think there was a short period where I really thought Brescia might score, but in the end, I think Milan should have probably added a second or a third. Um, I really do not like that it's basically the same team from last year in a system that they don't really understand. That's weird to me, on the, on, honestly, but they definitely should have scored. But it was all about the late game in the evening, and I will talk about what other games happened. I know there was a 2-2 Barcelona. Uh, I think also sooner that was of note yeah and some stuff in england happening but unfortunately i don't yet see the premier league uh that's a shame but the big game was definitely you win napoli and what a game it was just when you thought that um napoli is taking over they had a uh had a shot i think alan where uh jesney really needed to put out all the stops that he had in him uh then they get a corner corner kick they again try to get something going and then you will launch as a counter deck over Diego Costa who was pretty good uh, to say to make an under, uh, understatement running down uh, the left side um, with him uh, running Danilo who just came on and on the other side Ronaldo and I thought if Diego Costa plays to Ronaldo it's a surefire goal but he keeps the ball and I almost thought he had missed the chance but he just waited long enough to play it over to Danilo who slots it home. 1-0 for uh, Juve. Um, a little bit against the run of play. A few minutes later Iguain with a wonderful turn in, in the box and slams it home. Goal of the weekend. On, on, honestly this was a really well taken goal. And makes it um, 2 nil for Juve after 19 minutes. Uh, which, which reminds me, actually, I watched the um, late game in the Bundesliga between uh, Gladbach and Leipzig on Friday, which was also kind of, it was also interesting, where Gladbach dominated at first, and then Leipzig, Timo Werner makes the goal. Uh, Embolo did not, because he misses it, and I think right after half, and, and Werner makes a second. In stoppage time, two, two more goals, Embolo. Um, cuts it short and then Leipzig wins. Um, was a decent game, I have to say. I, I, I really enjoyed this one. Not necessarily the results, but yeah. Uh, you see, the, there were nice jerseys in there as well. But back to the Juve game. 2-0 um, and from that moment on, Juve was dominant. And they could have torn Napoli to shreds. Especially Sami Kadira, who had one sitter that was saved on the line and then another one 
where uh, he turns on, on, on the box and it's a really beautiful shot onto the crossbar. Could have been 4 0 in the second half, a little bit slower start. I think Lozano came on for um, Napoli. It was a little bit slower start, but then, you know, another, I think Diego Costa ran into the box and Ronaldo in the 70, 61st, 62nd? Yeah, 62nd. Uh, I say Diego's Douglas Costa, I'm, I'm stupid. Um, makes it 3 0, and everyone thought the game is done and dusted. Well, free kick Manolas in the 66th makes it 3 1. And then, uh, and then, and the ca uh, counter attack just a minute later that Irving Lozano, who just came on, makes it 3 2. Game on. I mean, that game was done and dusted for the most time, and suddenly Napoli is back in the game. I was really happy about that one. Uh, and Di Lorenzo he makes it 3 3 in the 81st after a free kick. And I thought, wow, is Napoli gonna pull out the sensation here? Nope, it was not to be. In the most unfair of circumstances, because I really thought the Kulibali played a tremendous game. Um, free kick from Pjanic. Kulibali wants to save it, but he mishits it, hits his shinker and goes right into the net in stoppage time. 4 3 for Juventus. And yeah. I cannot say I was disappointed because uh, Napoli was not the better team. Uh, I would have loved if they pulled out a point there, but I have to say Juventus was by far the better team on the night. Uh, if it would have gone right at halftime, it would have been 3 4 nil. So yeah, um, from that point of view, but it was an absolute amazing game and I'm going to continue watching Napoli and I cannot wait for my Napoli shirt to arrive. I said it uh, in my Serie A jersey review, part one comes... Um, in the afternoon, uh, but the, um, I ordered an Napoli jersey right after that because I really want to have one. Uh, I needed one, and that was 20% off of the classic full football shirts. And you know, it's at Napoli in there, uh, in that or in that nice collection of Serie A jerseys that I have here already. Um, Napoli 4 3 at Fiorentina, now 3 4 at um, Juve, and they haven't even played a home game. I don't know. I saw Juve start with two home games, and Napoli started with two away games, and two not easy ones at that. So, despite the result not going my way, I was quite satisfied. Yesterday, um, I actually was planning on a long soccer day because it was Derby day. We had the old firm Derby, which I, I was just too, <laughs> too spent. <laughs> You know, I need to make take, take my nap during the weekends. So yeah, and that was too early. But I actually I I wanted to watch it, and then I saw two. Just when I wanted to put and uh, rewatch it, I saw already the results. So yeah, what can 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 I do? And then there was that was the oldest of the derby still played, and the second old was the Viennese derby, which honestly is not of interest to me, even though me being from Austria. But at the moment, this is a team between two very mediocre uh, teams. A, a game between two very mediocre teams. Uh, that only crowd trouble you usually comes from that, and it's not too interesting. Rapid running uh, away, three-one winners, and then there was the North London derby between Arsenal and Tottenham, which I would have watched if it wouldn't intersect, and the Venice derby also would have intersect with the Derby della Capitale, which honestly, of all the ones, I mean, the old firm I think is really good and. Um, it's probably up there, but for me the Derby Capitale is probably the slightly better game at the moment and atmosphere. This is, in the big leagues, probably, probably the most heated match. And boy was it a match. Uh, not for goals, although there could have been many goals, because we had a new record in Serie A with six times uh, the players hit the bar. It started actually early with Lazio hitting the post. The woodwork, I should say, he hit him in post and Saniolo, right a few minutes later, hit again uh, the post. So it was 1 1 after 10 minutes <laughs> in uh, the woodwork shots. Uh, then a penalty where um, Jacko puts a ball in and it hits Milinkovic Savic right here on the hand, That's similar to what happened in the Champions League final. Uh, and we will see a lot of those pen penalties. I actually think the players will try to get penalties uh, like that. And yeah, um, penalty the color of slots home. Lazio has two more <laughs> times at the woodwork, one by um, 
Immobile, that was just incredible how he didn't make it, but also Zaniolo had one, so it could have been easily, easily 3-3 three, three at the half, and I would even say that Lazio had the better of the first half, they definitely had the better of the, at the beginning of the second half, uh, they came out storming, absolutely, and uh, Luis Alberto finally made it 1-1, um, one, one, and I actually thought that Roma would fall apart, but then Roma... Uh, collected themselves and I have to say if it wasn't for Justin Kluivert um, really messing up a few counter-attacks and they were really bad count counter-attacks in general Roma. Uh, they had a few CA situations where if they play a little bit uh, quicker they actually have half a chance of converting and may, may make another goal but on the other side I think Lazio was uh, on the night the better team. They hit even the woodwork one more time and I think it was uh, Luis Alberto but I'm not sure uh, in the 86th, then they thought they had the winner, but it was correctly ruled out first for offset and second the ball was over the line. Um, I have to say it would have been a fair winner. And I also thought that I think the Roman Derby is jersey-wise one of the best looking ones because it's so non-standard. I really like that one uh, from the looks of it. Well, in the meantime, put the girls to bed. Uh, and then I saw the end of Atletico Madrid against Eibar, uh, where Atletico got a 90th minute winner through Thomas. It was 2-2 when I started. And then I went Serie A. It was, you know, I was waiting for, for my wife to come home from work. And I didn't know what, and I actually ended up. First, I saw Udine take a, get a one nil lead um, over, uh, who did they play? Parma. Uh, Parma ended up three one uh, winning three one, but I then said I think the better game is uh, between Atalanta and Torino, and I think I made a good choice there. I was thinking also watching uh, Cagliari Inter, but then I, I didn't expect anything but an easy Inter victory. They got a big victory. I don't know how easy it was, but the Torino game, Torino Atalanta Torino was interesting. It was played in Parma, and it took me a while to get it, but I have 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 to figure yeah this is Parma. Uh, Boniface gives Torino a lead and why is it played in Parma because Atalanta is rebuilding a stadium and they are basically uh, going all over the Emilia Romagna cannot play in Milan obviously because there are two teams and Brescia is the big rival so they won't play there I don't get why they go so deep and far 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 away if there if they wouldn't be another stadium that's a little bit closer but hey Verona is what they also have to so whatever uh, gets a one lead and then uh, Atalanta comes a storming and Zapata makes the 1-1 one -one and I actually expected Atalanta to uh, win that one but Torino really gave up a fight early in the second half 2 and Zapata in a very steamrolling move makes it 2-1 and I thought oh, yeah that's gonna be it uh, but just three minutes later Berenguer gets an equalizer and then just a little bit later, Iso 66 makes it 3-2 for Torino and they hang on to the win. It was an enjoyable game. I actually thought that Torino really deserved their win, although At Atalanta showed that they can also be a fun side. I think that, that was actually a choice because I know that Atalanta can, if they are good, they are a fun team to watch. So that was my evening. I'll give you tonight how the leagues are standing, a little bit more about the other leagues, especially La Liga and Premier League. And I actually want to look at how 538 uh, judges at the moment the standings anyway give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too also please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe with that i wish you a wonderful day bye